work, so we are gonna... <laughs> I guess we're gonna go back to the old Skip Skype, and uh, we are gonna go to Alan K. Patch. He is just... He is demanding. And uh, we are gonna get Mr. Alan K. Patch in here and talk about a myriad of topics, but uh, we are going to find Mr. Alan K. Patch here and uh, get him on with us. And he will uh, he will join us here in a mere moments. And uh, Alan K. Patch is going to be with us here in just a few seconds. And uh, we are going to get our co-host, Mr. John Mosier, in here as well. Welcome back to it. It is the world famous Cheeky Jaguar Radio broadcast today on Facebook Live. Also, uh, Periscope, Twitter. Uh, Periscope is Twitter. I'm kind of an idiot. And uh, then uh, <laughs> Twitch is what I meant. All these places, all these horrible places that people watch video on, why can't we just go back to the typewriter? That has always been my question that I've asked. But uh, we have got Alan K. Patch with us today. Dr. Patch joins us. And uh, today we're looking for testing, antibodies, and vaccine for COVID-19. Protect and save lives, but also protect and restore our economy, which has kind of been the theme of today's uh, program here on castbox.fm, whatever the hell that is, and uh, <laughs> which uh, cannot suffer for a long time without devastating effects. Early in our nation's history, we faced a similar problem that nearly wiped out any chance of having a United States of America. And to join us today, Mr. Alan K. Patch, or as I like to refer to him, the, uh, the ferret in the jello fight, uh, AK Patch, how are you, sir? <laughs> All right, Patch. good, Jiggy. Hi, John. Good to see you again. <laughs> how are you, sir? Uh, wonderful. It's great to be back. So, uh, Dr. Patch, um, this, this, this situation here, tell us about this. Pharmaceutical companies, that they're, they're working on all these different things. Uh, give, give, give us a history lesson here, my friend. Well, yeah, right now we're, we're involved in this situation where we have to create uh, a vaccine. We're, we're trying to get everything together. They're working uh, all over the world. And you think about it, we've got, you know, all these brilliant scientists. Uh, we've got a uh, worldwide effort, you know, and uh, we have knowledge of virology and we have all this sophisticated machinery. And uh, we're, you know, hopefully we're going to get this vaccine sooner rather than later. But, you know, what about a couple hundred years ago, you know, when we had a little knowledge of it? I, I want to go back to 1799 to the time period when George Washington died. And, okay. uh, you know, he died at 67 years old. And uh, there wasn't knowledge of bacteriology back then and virology. And... He came in uh, from being out in the cold and riding around uh, his property, and he got a sore throat. In other words, the back of his throat swelled up. And uh, so he was kind of laid up in bed, and they brought the doctors over, and their first response is, we have to bleed him. Because they thought in those days you had to balance the four humors of the body, and they didn't really understand bacteriology and all these kind of things. So they bled him a number of times, and that sort of contributed to his death. Well, guess what? They did that back in ancient Greece and Rome, and that's how much medicine had really, you know, advanced. But at the same time, we're going to talk about this situation that happened during the American Revolution. We have got Alan K. Patch with us today. AKPatchAuthor.com is the official website. Go over and check out AKPatchAuthor.com. So, um, so... What, what what are some of these uh, uh, events and some of the different things that that are going on? I notice uh, a smallpox breakout. Uh, d d tell us about some of the different things that that you've you've learned and that you've got details on here. Well, this is what happened. You know, there was a smallpox breakout. I mean, that that was even going on during Boston in Boston after the time of uh, you know Bunker Hill and the siege of Boston. So George Washington is faced with a smallpox breakout, not only in the community, but also in his army. So he's like telling, well, you know, if, if you survive smallpox, you can come in, but otherwise he doesn't want it to spread. I mean, it becomes a devastating problem for his army. And, uh, you know, at the same time, you have to think about this fact that, you know, George Washington, he had smallpox when he was a young man. 
he went down and visited his brother down in the Caribbean, and I think he had it. You know, he had a 24-day uh, horrible, um, you know, battle with it, but he survived it, and he had the scars for the rest of his life because smallpox. Uh, if you survive it, you know, you get these pustules, and and it creates these scars. You get them on your face and all over your body. Uh, so he did survive it. He knew how bad a smallpox breakout would be. And uh, you, the, the thing about it is the Continental Army would break out in smallpox, but the British would not because they had already been inoculated to a degree. I'm using quotation marks. Yep. And so you have our soldiers at risk, but the British not. And you have pivotal battles coming up. And, um, you know, it, the problem is he has to fight the disease and the British at the same time. So we're just going to give an example. They had this expedition to Quebec, and we were going to invade Canada. I mean, we might have ended up with Canada. They sent about 10,000 troops up there in the winter time. So first of all, they had that challenge. And you could say 30% of them, almost ha to, to a half of them, ended up with smallpox. And it kind of, it, it started to, you know, wipe out their effort. There's a quote from John Adams about that time period. And he says, our misfortunes in Canada are enough to melt a heart of stone. He wrote this in June 76. The smallpox is 10 times more terrible than the Britons, Canadians, and Indians together. So you can see what a devastating problem this was, not to mention typhoid and, you know, dysentery and all the other things that troops had to um, combat. We have got Alan K. Patch with us today. Dr. Patch joins us here on our broadcast. And uh, we are coming to you today here on BitChute, also uh, CastBox.fm. And uh, best-selling author, Mr. Alan K. Patch with us today. And uh, so what exactly happened here? So what Washington did uh, is, you know, he wants to inoculate the whole army. But, you know, uh, this, this, this concept of trying to stop smallpox with with a process called variolation and this this process was was outlawed by the continental congress all right so what they would do is they would cut into a pustule of someone who had smallpox take it and then cut cut an incision on someone else's arm and then inoculate them with it you know hoping that they're going to get a lesser degree of the smallpox disease and so they did that down the line. So he makes the decision in February of, of 1777 to inoculate the whole army, essentially wow. while they're in winter quarters. So, you know, he has maybe a fourth or a third of the army that's got smallpox, but the rest of them are healthy. And so he's going to make this command decision to inoculate everyone. But, Jeez. you know, it, it, you know, it doesn't come without risks. You know, I mean, he's he's going to give the whole army smallpox and hope that they get a lesser degree of it. But now they're immune from it for the rest of the time that they're in the army. And so that's what he did. By the end of the year, they had inoculated 40,000 soldiers. So he took that huge chance. But think about it. When you when you when you give, you know, your troops this this variolation technique and they you give them hopefully a, a lesser degree of the smallpox you know they are sick so you can't let the british know that this is being done otherwise they might attack while your troops are sick yes so I, I mean think think it just gives you more and more respect for our founding fathers and especially george washington making that kind of decision to inoculate his whole army and of course you know it worked and the and the 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 amount of uh, smallpox went down to, I mean, the death, uh, you know, the mortality rate went down to 2%. And uh, the prevalence of smallpox among his troops went down from, say, almost 20% down to like 1%. So wow. uh, what, a, what an incredible decision for him to make uh, with everything at risk. It is Alan K. Patch. He's with us today. AKPatchAuthor.com is the official website. Go over to AKPatchAuthor.com. Com. And uh, Alan joins us today here on our big program. So, uh, so Alan, uh, what else do you have for us on this topic? Well, um, I would just say uh, that it would be good for um, any listeners to go back and look at George Washington and see what he encountered. Not only is he fighting uh, these battles with, you know, troops that are underarmed, underfed, uh, you know, don't necessarily have the proper clothing in the wintertime. But he, he's battling these other diseases at the same time. And we know how these diseases devastate armies. I mean, they, you know, in the Civil War, they talk about 
the number of deaths, but you know, you have to also go like, oh, how many of these deaths actually occurred from disease and infections and, and other things? And we didn't really get a handle on that until much later. Um, you know, we we did a show once on D Day, and yep. uh, they developed penicillin, and finally they got a few million doses of of penicillin available for D Day because they were expecting far more casualties. So just think about those advances from the 1700s into the mid 1900s and, and what we learn in that period of time and, and really almost in the late 1800s to early 1800s we're just starting to understand bacteriology absolutely amazing uh doctor t- tell us about uh what, what what you're currently doing writing wise well you know what uh i have the trilogy out that uh, people can begin to read right now while i'm getting this standalone novel ready it's going to be a paranormal mystery. Uh, the standalone book is going to be out in a couple of months. But in the meantime, uh, they can go to uh, Amazon and look up Passage at Delphi and AK Patch Author and get going on that series. Awesome. And uh, so it's always good to see uh, listeners come in and, and get into the series. And some, maybe someday we can take in callers and, and talk about it as that people would be start awesome. to read. That would be awesome. We could definitely do How that. How are you doing, John? Not bad, not bad at all. All right. So, so John, listening to all this today, what would you have any questions for for Doctor Patchwell? We've got him here. Um, do you think like environment and like the climate and stuff had lots of things to do with the different um, diseases, viruses, and stuff back then? Because it seems like back then, um, lots of them were, you know, pretty much there were certain ones that would happen, you know, farther south where it was warmer. And as you went farther south than that, and then there was other stuff that happened due to, like, changing weather conditions and, like, the natives, like, they, you know, the Indians and the smallpox, it hadn't been a, it kind of ran right through them at first because they'd never been exposed to it before. Do you think that's part of the problem with everything? Uh, well, well, sure. You know, this, this whole idea of immunity, you bring up a good point, and, and I'll give you another example of that. Uh, when when the pilgrims landed in Plymouth, um, the the uh, the Wampanoags, who were the Indian tribe that lived in the area, uh, they were wiped out um, previously a few years earlier by some by some fishermen by some traders that landed on the shore and gave them a disease. All right, so it kind of wiped wow. them out in that area. And so when the pilgrims came in, they gave them that site that had been previously a village that had been wiped out by disease. So yeah, this whole idea of not having immunity, uh, you go back and look what happened to the Native Americans and it's and it's horrible uh, that they did not have immunity to diseases that came over from Europe. Uh, as far as environment goes, sure, you know, uh, you know what, what uh, might survive in one temperature uh, might be different than another. Absolutely cool. amazing. That is uh so so Dr. Patch from a from a medical perspective uh and also as uh, as as being a, a a former dentist I think uh what w- what you do I- is amazing in fact the, the the other day uh I had someone who told me they had to go for a dentist appointment and they made him wear a mask to go in to see the dentist and I'm like why are we wearing the mask you're just gonna have to take it off. They're gonna have to work on their teeth. <laughs> well, uh, you know what a challenge if you think about it. Uh, you know the, uh, you know I go back into my days um, in the Navy in the early '80s when the whole issue with AIDS was coming out. Yes. And and always, you know, we're preparing for hepatitis B and hepatitis C and all these. So we're used to a lot of this sterilization, but it's gone up to a whole new level now. And as you can see, there's face shields, there's masks, there's all these gowns that have to be taken on and off. And so the, you know, the sterilization process is, has been pronounced. So yeah, when you go to the dentist, you'll see how much work that they're doing just to prepare to be able to see someone, have them come in the office, take care of them, try to keep them isolated, keep their staff healthy, keep themselves healthy. It's a whole new challenge, and a, a great number of my friends are going uh, through this at the moment, uh, just getting their offices ready that's, that are just opening up, as you say. So, uh, Alan, I guess before we let you go, how, how do people find you on social media, websites, and, uh, and, and, and get your books and everything? 
Well, you know what? They can go onto Facebook and go to uh, Passage of Delphi, AK Patch Author, and just like it or join it because I'm always posting on there. And I'm on Instagram uh, occasionally also, but they can go to Amazon if they want to get involved in the series and uh, look up AK Patch Author or just go to Passage of Delphi. That's the first book in the series. Read that one. So I, uh, I, I've written it uh, to be entertaining and to take people to places maybe they never thought of before. So it's, 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 it, it's an adventure I think that they'll enjoy.